So our presenters are going to share some powerful industry-specific HMIs, but before we get started, we're going to talk about what makes a good HMI in general. I'm going to draw on some of our past webinars. I'm going to plagiarize myself here, uh, briefly go over some principles for a successful design. I encourage all of you to visit the resources section of our website. We've got a lot of in-depth material on these topics. So for today, I just want you to keep in mind we're going to go over some ease of navigation, reusability, high performance HMI techniques, alarm management, and mobile responsiveness. If you start off planning around these ideas, you'll build a successful HMI. So let's get started with navigation. Uh, you'll want to determine your navigation strategy and layout really early in your project planning. Overall, you want to limit the number of clicks users need to find information, and you want to avoid hidden content. So here's some examples of two navigation strategies. Uh, your broad and shallow starts with a home screen. Users can navigate from here to any other screen. This is really useful if you have a lot of categories, but only a few pieces of information in each, as this strategy requires fewer clicks and allows users to see all of the options at once. The narrow and deep really limits your options at the home screen, and then you can dig down as needed. This is useful if you just have a few categories, but each one contains a lot of information. Uh, here we see some examples of our navigation layout. I'm sure you've all seen some of this before. Our screen is broken up to, into some top and side navigation. Uh, the main content takes up most of the real estate, and we have some additional metrics along the bottom of the screen. Uh, we see top navigation typically because users will intuitively look to the top of the screen for navigation. Um, we also typically see maybe a home page link in the upper left, some system information such as your critical alarms towards the right. You could consider a second row of top navigation buttons or side navigation that changes with your top navigation. Uh, we're gonna talk more about responsive design in a moment, but if you start off planning with responsiveness, responsiveness in mind, you're gonna save some time later. Uh, this shows a self-hiding navigation drawer from our online demo. It shows that your menu is replaced with that hamburger icon when the screen size is reduced. So now we've settled on a navigation strategy, we know about our layout, let's start talking about our design. So when starting out, you wanna think about a reusable or object-oriented design. Well, why do we even care about this? Because reusable components will save us time in building and maintaining our projects. Once we have a reusable object, we can implement it in any new project. If we want to make changes, we only have to make changes in one place. And the shared object is going to provide a consistent experience for our users. So whenever you create something new in Ignition, ask yourself if you could reuse it and what parameters would you need to make it more dynamic. So let's get started with the project level. Ignition 8 introduced project inheritance. What if you want a consistent navigation header? or you wanna share some scripts or views in all of your projects. There's no need to copy and paste. Just consider creating a global project for all of your shared resources. You are not limited to one global project. You can use multiple levels of inheritance to build your resource library. Now we're gonna talk about UDTs or user-defined types. This is just a group of tags and properties representing some object like a tank or motor, this is going to give you a consistent structure. Every instance is going to have the same alarms, properties, folders. Your tag addresses can be parameterized, and you can have multiple UDT instances created in just a few clicks. The modifications can be made on the definition, and changes are going to apply to all instances automatically. If you find yourself building a folder of tags and then copying that folder to create another instance, time for you to build a UDT. We can also reuse our views. Uh, one of the most common pitfalls we see is creating copies of a view for multiple objects. In this tank example, we could have made our lives much easier by just creating one view with a tank number parameter instead of a view for each tank. So we've talked a little about making the life of the designer easier. Let's switch focus and talk about our users. We want them to find information quickly. 
there's a lot of material out there on this topic, but we're going to cover a few points, including color and indicators, analog versus digital, data with context, and spark lines. Let's talk about color first. In traditional HMI, almost everything has a color. It's difficult to see what needs attention at a glance. High performance HMIs can look pretty basic and simplistic. They typically use grayscale rather than graphics and bright colors. And we really want to visually contrast critical and non-critical states. What color stands out here? It's pretty obvious, right? So if we look at this again on the high performance HMI screen, we can quickly see we have a red alert on this tank on the left hand side. Uh, it's a rectangle with a numeral one. This number one is indicating our highest priority alert and our colorblind users can key in on shapes and numerals. Can you mix traditional and high performance? Sure, just be sure to use color judiciously and, and stay consistent and keep reusability in mind. The moving analog indicators are a great way of displaying whether value is within our desired operating range. As we can see, even with only the one number there and without context, you can tell that we are within range. With the digital display, we don't have any context or meaning. This is a really good time to talk about data with context. The example on the left shows you a blood pressure reading. Most of us are not going to know if that is a good or bad result. The, the display on the right is more informative. It shows you that the reading is high compared with the norm, and it shows you where it falls on the spectrum of all possible readings. Speaking of data with context, the sparkline chart gives us a way to display recent history and discern trends for a single data point we get contextual information in a very small amount of space. So now that we have talked about navigation, layout, and screen design, let's talk about getting our users' attention with alarms. This is a poorly managed alarm system, our poor user. We have alarm flooding, multiple alarms in a short period. Uh, we could have stale alarms that will just stay in, a, in, a, in the alarm state continuously for hours on end. We have chattering alarms. These are going from active to clear multiple times a minute. Users are going to silence these. They're not going to pay attention. So it's really important we manage them. One way we want to do this is filter them. We want to make sure we're only showing alarms uh, to users in certain groups or when they've navigated to certain areas of our project. We want to watch our priorities. You want to create your alarms with a low priority by default. Only the most important alarm should be your high or critical priority. You can reduce your number of alarms by consolidating messages into a single message. And you can shelve an alarm to temporarily silence it or even disable alarms for equipment that is down for maintenance. Last thing we're going to talk about is responsive design. So not every project requires this. Many HMI screens you know, have some PNID layout. They're meant to be viewed on a static screen, and they're not going to respond well to scaling. However, we see an increasing demand for a responsive user interface. Users want everything from widescreen display to tablets and mobile devices and everything in between. Uh, they may have touch screens, and we're going to have to think about how they're going to interact with our projects. So keeping this responsiveness in mind when you start planning your project is going to save you time later. Uh, for example, you might want to build in some responsive menus right away, like we saw in the beginning. You could start with just a few main screens and your PNID layouts, and maybe you'll build some mobile screens showing just alerts or lists of devices. 